coming in to kick off the 4 o'clock news and politics hour. We're going to stay local here in New England with some people making a big impact. Um, I have here with me Associate Professor Su Yang Yu at UMass Lowell talking about the next generation textiles to sense structure damage. I just want to give you a little preview before we welcome the professor. He worked along with other experts in the field, collaborating with researchers at St. Gobain, a multinational corporation with an R&D center in Northborough to develop fabrics integrated with optical fibers and sensors, and these sensing fabrics can be applied to existing structures to monitor strain or detect cracks in their early stages, thereby minimizing maintenance costs and environmental impacts. Professor, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, appreciate getting to hear a little bit more about your research. Obviously, New England is so tops for colleges and universities and working in tandem with companies here. We have some big structural issues here in Rhode Island with our bridges. Across the country, we do see crumbling infrastructure. But talk with us about identifying this potential that fabrics applied to various structures, and I'll let you talk about that, being able to identify strains and potential problems earlier than we can now. Mm -hmm. So how does yes. going to be? <laughs> Hi. Uh, I think that first of all, this project represents the, uh, the marriage between two very traditional uh, industries, as we know. Uh, textile and civil engineering are, are very, very uh, old, especially in law. We have a proud history in textile industry. Now, the reason we, we like to use fabrics to, uh, to, to monitor civil infrastructure systems is because I actually have an example of the fabrics like this. Now, by integrating the fiber optics sensors into these kind of fabrics, you can protect the fibers and insert them into either concrete structures or attach them onto the surface of steel structures. Now, we have more than 600 bridges, uh, for example, in this country, and about 9% of them are considered structurally deficient. Yes. So right now, state DOTs don't have a very clear idea about that, how many of them are about to collapse uh, in the premature failure mode, which is why this, we believe that this kind of novel sensors can help the DO, state DOTs to get the much better sense about their structure's condition. Well, fantastic. As I mentioned, you know, you hit the nail on the head. We know here in Rhode Island how structurally deficient our bridges are. So you're on the research side of things. You worked with the company. I mean, hopefully we're going to see, do we see big government contracts uh, coming down the line to apply this type of technology? Yes. <laughs> well, eventually we hope to turn this university uh, research product into commercial uh, sensing uh, products that the industry and the state governments can adapt. And this is your bread and butter, you're in engineering. I mean, how did even the concept come up? I mean, it's the, it's the academics, it's the professors, that fabric could be used in such a manner to, again, detect these structural deficiencies. Okay, that's a very interesting question. Well, it all started from our everyday uh, experience. Think about this. We wear fabrics uh, every day, right? And uh, we enjoyed the protection from the fabrics. Now, if you look at civil infrastructure systems, uh, the way I see it is they are our unconscious patients. They don't have neural systems. So whenever anything goes wrong with our bridges or our tunnels or pipelines, we have to go to them and expect it. So this idea of, or, of combining fabrics or integrating fabrics into civil infrastructure systems is to provide a neural system. So this way, researchers and state governments can learn about their conditions while sitting in the office by sending signals to the structures and collecting the responses. So technically, how can we do this? Um, a simple way to put this is fiber optics enable us to send light through glass or through polymers, and then by receiving the fractions and determine the change of the frequency contents, we can determine the mechanical property change of the fiber. Okay. And so talk with us a little bit about that, about the bridges, about the tunnels. How much would a, a small amount, how much fabric would be used and where would it be placed? I mean, how much fabric would we be talking that would have to be utilized to detect these deficiencies? Mm -hmm. Our vision is to start with what we call critical component monitoring, which are thinking about 
couple hundred thousand, uh, couple hundred square feet to mm -hmm. monitor so certain components. Take highway bridges as example. We will be monitoring the bridge piers, which is the most critical element. And then, well, when it applies to tunnels, if the cost permits, we would like to monitor the entire tunnel to monitor whether there's a, a excessive underground table or excessive uh, settlements are from the ground surface. So there's a great potential in this application, but the every sensing system must be specifically designed for a particular structure. This is absolutely fascinating. And you, a researcher at UMass Lowell, how much of your time has this, this taken up? Is this a big chunk of your focus area right now, Professor? <laughs> um, well, of course, uh, UMass Lowell researchers are, uh, I know that most people consider UMass Lowell it's probably maybe 20 or 30 years ago, uh, there weren't much research uh, going on here. But in the past 10 years, if you have been to UMass Lowell, you probably have seen this uh, drastic change to our campus. I would say that 40 to 50 percent of my time uh, at UMass Lowell is essentially spent on research. So I consider myself as half researcher and half educator. Very good. Well, Professor, I appreciate your taking the time again. This is an issue that is not just of importance to Rhode Island, but the rest of the country. Perhaps maybe if we're, dri if we're driving along, would we see these fabrics or will they be like uniquely placed that maybe the average person might not see them? Well, we hope the presence of these fabrics can make the public feel safer. And certainly the appearance can be uh, per perceiving, but uh, I think that um, the color of the fabrics, some of the fabrics will be embedded, some of them will be t attached to the surface. Okay. So you may see them or you may not you see may them, but it doesn't mean that they don't not. exist. Well, very good. We look forward to hearing more about this again as states around the country struggle to find ways to make sure that their bridges and tunnels are maintained. It's very interesting to hear about the research coming out of UMass Lowell that might potentially have an impact on this. So Professor Tsu Yang Yu, uh, UMass Lowell, I appreciate your taking the time to Skype in and give us a little bit of what's going on that we might see more of in the future. Thank you. Okay, thanks Professor, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay everyone, thanks for continuing to join us here. We'll be right back with our next guest in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. All right, so I'm all set, right? 